Good morning, my shiny friends out there. It's Thursday. <laughs> Next Thursday will be Thanksgiving. We're going on a trip to my Boo Bear's house. I could not be more excited. I tell you, I'm on cloud a zillion. But um, today is November 18, 2021, and we're going to talk about humble hearts today. Humble hearts. The scripture is Luke 6, 20. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Now, what did Jesus mean by poor? What was the definition of that word in the language that he spoke? You know, there's a lot of words in English that don't exactly match the words from other languages. Like, for instance, and me and I don't know which language is which, but <clears throat> there is a language where there's like five different kinds of love. And in English, there's only one word for love. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. I don't think Jesus meant by poor, that they were dirt poor, living in a shack, begging for money on the street, that type of thing. I don't think that's what he meant. But you can decide what you think he meant, okay? <laughs> Let's see what the lady who wrote this little devotion book says about it. Is Jesus saying that the kingdom is only for the poor? We know that one other time he said it is hard for a rich person to enter heaven. It may be that money has nothing to do with it. What comes with wealth may be the key. I totally, totally agree with that. You need to be humble and dependent on God. Jesus lived an example of this kind of humility. Serving others, helping people who were seen as unimportant, and doing what God wanted him to do. A humble heart is welcome into the kingdom of God. And you know who else Jesus hung around with? Sinners. <laughs> he loved to hang around with sinners. But... Fortunately, the sinners that he hung around with seem to always change and want to be like Jesus. You know, sometimes people are sinners and they don't know they're sinners. We're all sinners. We're all born sinners. All of us. And none of us is ever perfect. We're always sinners. We're saved by grace. Praise God forevermore. But we can learn. We can learn how to be better people by applying the word to ourselves and to how we live every day and to especially how we treat other people. I think one of the saddest things about the age we're living in now is these people that totally, totally don't know God at all, don't want to know God at all, or they actually serve the devil. <laughs> they don't know what they don't know. They're never happy. They're always in a bad mood. They're very, very moody and mad, and they strike back at the slightest little thing. This road rage thing, my gosh, can you imagine somebody getting out of their car and shooting you because you didn't go fast enough or you didn't get out of their way or you did some silly little thing? It's just beyond belief. People without God have no tolerance. And that's the sad thing about it. They begged us, oh, be tolerant, be tolerant. We can't help it we're gay. We can't help it we're alcoholics. We can't help it we're drug addicts. We all have a disease. We were born with it, blah, blah, blah. That is just nonsense. They wanted us to tolerate them, but they don't tolerate any of us. They hate us. They hate the Bible. They hate God. They hate Christianity. You know why? Because God gave us ten commandments, not suggestions, commandments. And these people who are living in sin, whether they realize it or not, they don't want anybody telling them what you're doing is sinful. What you're doing will keep you from heaven. What you're doing is letting your flesh be in control Instead of letting your spirit, your conscience, be in control, you have killed your conscience. It doesn't even exist anymore. It never says to you, this is wrong, don't do this. This is wrong, don't do this. 
because it is so drugged. Oh, the drugs, the drugs, the drugs. It still just shocks me beyond belief that the government gives drug addicts needles. I mean, isn't it still a sin? Isn't, yeah, I know it's a sin, but isn't it still a crime to use illegal drugs? When did that become okay to do? And here I get off, I get off. You know, it's hard not to get off into the sadness and the sickness that is so prevalent in America right now. It's so sad because you see it everywhere you go. Jerry and I are getting ready to go to Walmart after a while. And some of the things we see going on there, just especially the way people treat their children, it's just so, so sad. I, I, I've told you before how you'll go to buy groceries or go to Walmart or wherever, and you've got young kids, one, two o'clock in the afternoon, and they're just screaming. And they're, and they're in their cart, or they're dragging them by their hand, and the kids are just screaming because they need a nap. They're tired. They need a nap. Children need naps. My mom, dad, my mother, <laughs> made us take naps till we were teenagers. She used to make us go into our room after lunch for one hour. And she said, I don't care if you go to sleep or you don't, but you're going to stay in there and you're going to be quiet and you're going to lay in your bed. <laughs> but we had to take naps. And it's good for you. Children, children are sweet and loving if you take care of them properly. If they get enough sleep and you feed them right and you dress them right, children are just darling little angels. If they have parents who are who have self-control and who can properly take care of a child, no matter how much time it takes, no matter how much of their shopping they might have to do without or change to a different time or reschedule their lives, I just think it's so, so sad. I just want to go grab those babies and take them out to the car and just hug them and rock them and let them take a nap in my car. It's just so sad the way people are with their children these days. Not everybody. You always say, you always say, everybody, you think everybody's that way. No, 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 I don't. You're not. I'm not. Jerry's not. But so many of our young people are caught, caught in a web of lies and deceit, and they don't know why they're here and where they're going when they leave. And I think it's the saddest, saddest thing in the whole wide world. So, poor, rich, doesn't matter to Jesus as long as you put him first. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Okay? So, humble hearts. <laughs> oh, let's pray for these people. Let's pray for these people that the Holy Spirit will convict their hearts and wake up their consciences and they will know how to choose God. I love you all. Jerry and I are going to go shopping for a little food for our RV. Food for the RV has to be kind of different than the food I make here in the house. We have a convection oven in the RV. It's a microwave convection oven. Well, I know how to use it as a microwave, but I don't know how to use it as a normal oven yet, so <laughs> some training needs to be happening there. Okay, dear ones, have a wonderful day, and I'll be back tomorrow.